Hey you folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to a video on the asset editor for Cities Skyline. So Cities Skyline ships with two different kinds of content creation tools in the tools menu. There's both the map editor and the asset editor, and the asset editor is what we're going to start off with today. So we're going to go ahead and load up a new one. Uh, you have to choose an environment to just basically preview it in, you know, what kind of grass and lighting do you want to look at your asset in. As far as I know, that has nothing to do with anything much. And there's a few different categories of assets to, uh, to play with. I'm going to start off here, I'm mostly just going to look at the intersection tool right now, mostly because that's the only one I really uh, know how to use properly. And we're going to go ahead and hit continue. So what you get is a flat area for you to start developing your asset in. Now, um, this works it gives you a limited subset of tools. For the intersection, you basically just have roads to choose from, as well as the ability to plop down some trees, for example. Um, and uh, basically, it lets you create something that is very much like the intersections that you would normally have in the intersections menu here. For example, a roundabout, like this one here. This could have and probably was created in exactly this asset manager. Now, these assets that you, you get, these intersections that you get, can then be edited completely normally. This includes in-game. If you put this roundabout down in the game, you can then decide to go and delete a section of the road. This works perfectly fine in-game, and it works perfectly fine in this editor as well. Let me go ahead and just uh, clear this out and show you one of the ones I built before. I've actually built a couple of them. Um, I think this one is probably the one I've built that is maybe the best looking. So you can see here, this is an interchange between a highway. These are two highway roads, right? Three lanes going one way, three lanes going the other way, standard highway stuff. But I, uh, I wanted a four lane road that was able to crisscross the highway and also provide on ramps and off ramps. So I went ahead and put this thing together. This is actually something that I realized I wanted in one of my current games. And obviously, you can just build this in your normal normal game, but I realized this might be something that I will want to use over and over in uh, future cities. So I made it in the asset editor here so that I can just use it in my actual city. I made another one over here. You can see here, again, this is the preview version of the game, so not everything is necessarily um, finished. Uh, so you might get a slightly different experience than what I've got here. So then I built another intersection here. The goal of this one was to go from a six-lane road into a highway, not crossing the highway necessarily, uh, but providing the ability to go to either side. I don't think this one is quite as nice. It might be able to handle, you know, a decent amount of volume. Obviously, I could have ended up with something relatively similar to this structure, for example. I should have just had the six-lane highway go above. I mean, the four-lane and a six-lane highway, there's not much of a difference between one another. But I wanted, A, a T-junction, and I was hoping that um, this might be able to handle a little bit more traffic than some of the others. Uh, a few things to note about this particular configuration here is, um, one, if, you, if you're traveling here and you want to go, say, towards the east, right, towards the right, uh, it's fine. You can you can go go here and turn this way. But if you want to go to the west, you have to go all the way across the bridge and then make a left over here to be able to take the western route. And you'll notice that we have traffic lights here. So the this version here has a controlled intersection at both sides. So you've got traffic lights, and that can you know slow down your traffic a bit. It's easy to get everywhere, but the traffic lights can slow things down. Whereas this version here, because of the way that I built the intersection, there are no traffic lights whatsoever. So depending on exactly what your traffic requirements are, you can do better or worse. Now, it doesn't have to be the six lane here thing here. I could have done this exact sort of thing with a either a two lane. Uh, let's try to get this lined up properly. No, yes. I don't know. It's going a little crooked. Effectively the same thing here. Again, no traffic lights. Or I could have even gone with a... Uh, with an actual two lane. Did I say two lane before? I meant four lane and a, and a two lane here. And again, there's no traffic lights. So it's not like this configuration here is explicitly uh, oriented towards a, uh, a six lane highway. It works with the twos and the fours perfectly fine as well. So um, let's go ahead and make another version of an intersection and see what we can do. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit new asset. We'll stick with the intersection for now. And rather than work on something that's a highway, let's say you've got a situation where maybe what you're doing is you've got, um, let's say you've got a big four lane avenue that goes through the center of your town like this. And you want to get connected up to some other regions. You can see here it even previews the zoning for you. Um, and you want to create some sort of structure for it. But what kind of structure are you looking to do? I don't know, Let, let's make like a bit of a city block that we might like to be able to reuse from time to time. Uh, something that maybe has a one-way lane that goes um, off to the right that way, and also maybe from here, is that the same length? Five and five, yeah, that's exactly the same length. 
um, and that goes towards the right. So then we'll do another one. What we'll do is actually we'll take a regular two-lane road that connects up along here. There we go. We'll use the, the little preview tool to get the right length. And then what we'll do is we'll create a two-lane here, but what we don't want to do is create an intersection with the two-way two-lane road here because it might, you know, generate some extra traffic. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to go and click on, I'm going to go to just one side of the, uh, the four-lane avenue. I'm going to hit page up to get some elevation, and I'll build a road that goes across like that. And then what I'll do is I'll page down. Well, actually, I don't even need to page down if I'm clicking it in. So I'm going to do something like this to connect that up that way. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and just extend it out one more length using the, the guides. And then I'm going to use a one way again. And since this one was going to the right, I can go to, say, the left like that and get a bit of a, of a loop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and trim this thing down. Um, you know what? Let's, let's trim it all the way down to something like that. And there we go. So we're going to make a new asset there. So all we have to do now is save this and call this something like a... Um, uh, I don't know, a city block. Maybe it's just like a two by two city block is going to be the name of our asset. This is the file name. And then we also have to give it the uh, asset name over here. So we'll just use the same for both. So we've gone ahead and saved that. And now if we go into a game, let's go to the main menu. And just to make sure that we can get it right away, let's go ahead to the mods screen, turn on unlimited money and unlock everything. And you'll notice if we go to our assets tab, you can actually see your new structure right over here. Oh, I forgot to use a screenshot. Hold on, let's get that going. Go back into tools, asset manager, load. The sunny uh, environment is fine. And we're gonna load our two by two city block. And what we're going to do is use right over here, this is the screenshot tool. So we're just going to sort of position things the way we might want it, something like this, and then click. There we go. And now when I save, you can see here there's a list of screenshots available. And uh, just we only have the one screenshot, which is fine. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and save that. We'll overwrite our previous version. That's okay. Return to the main menu. Yes. And if we go to the content manager and check our assets, you can see, there we go. There's our two by two city block with the preview properly. And if I hit share, I can actually put it on the workshop, uh, the Steam workshop so that other people can also use this two by two city block. Let's go and try it in the game. We're gonna hit new game. We're gonna load up uh, whatever map, doesn't actually make a difference here. And then once we get in, again, we have all the, uh, the cheat mods turned on. So we'll have unlimited money and everything will be unlocked from the start, which includes our, uh, our interchanges. So now if we go down to the roads and go to the interchanges here, the intersections, you can see again right now in the preview build that I've got, there's these blank squares. I'm thinking that that'll get changed. Some of the names, you can see building underscore title. Um, it's just not loading it correctly. I'm sure that will be fixed. But if we look, there's the one I showed you about. It's got to be placed on relatively flat land. There's the other one I uh, showed you right there. And then the one we just built together right now, the city block. Bam. In fact, the city block is much easier to place everywhere. I think because of the way I built this one with the ramps and whatever, it's a lot more finicky about uh, where it can be placed. But the city block looks like it can basically be placed anywhere as long as it's not in the water. So, um, oh, was there a dead spot right over there? Yeah, steep too sloop. Or slope too steep. Yeah, and there's a bit of a hill here. It's a bit hard to see, but that's what, what's stopping things there. Um, and yeah, it'll try to snap. It doesn't always necessarily let you build when it just snaps somewhere, well, because here there's there's actual overlap, so we wouldn't want that. Um, but if I took my actual highway over here, or not highway, but my, my street, and did something like that, I should, if I'm not wrong, oops, there we go, connect it up like so. And there we go. Just like that, we have made an asset, and we can share it on the Steam Asset Store in the workshop and share it with other people if we've got something really cool. And certainly, people will be producing a lot of that. You can see in the, the other, these others here, I added a bunch of trees as well, which I was allowed to do, which is kind of fun. And uh, there we go. We'll go back to the asset thing. We'll take a look at the buildings very quickly, only very briefly, because it's actually an aspect of the, uh, the asset manager or asset editor that I'm not 100% uh, confident about yet and a lot of the custom building stuff may actually re require um, using a certain amount of third-party tools to make something really cool now we have to use a template to start off with we can use one of our existing ones or um, we can say we can go to an existing building or maybe a school right let's take this school load this up 
select a model to import. These are the FBXs. These are different models that we can load in as the baseline of our thing. We'll go ahead and use the, uh, the school itself. Um, those FBXs, those are the sort of things you can make in any sort of 3D modeling program. Blender is a good one that is free. So we've got some properties over here. We can define how expensive it is to build, how much electricity it uses, how much water it uses, what kind of workers it needs to be fully efficient. Um, the education accumulation, and I think these, yeah, the colors of the building, right? Color one, two, three, and depending on what kind of material gets applied, they'll get combined in different ways. Uh, but not only that, we can add some decorations. Like, for example, we can add in some billboards. So one there and one there. Now, this is a corporate sponsored school, for example. So we could do something like that. We could take this school and maybe uh, make the price half as much because it is sponsored by a corporation. So uh, Dino Oil, Ooh, it's a bit hard to place because the way the building is sticking out, is it going to be easier on the side? Um, because I can rotate this. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Get some sponsor logos all over the place. Here's a nice big one for a yakisoba tasty noodle. Um, these are special billboards. Some of them are 3D. Oh, these are random. So I think every time you place the building, it might be a different logo. I'm not 100% I'm not sure how that works. But also you've got these, uh, these animated ones. And this, this building has a lot of bits that poke out, so it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit hard to properly demonstrate. But there we go. Like you can see here, because he's got all these little la these slats that come out, it's a little bit off. Oh, this is a better side for it because it's nice and flat. Click, click, rotate it up, and put it there, and another one there. And what do we have here? Oh yeah, this one uh, for whatever reason I couldn't. Oh oh oh, it's inverted. There we go. Get you to drink that cola and. There we go, some sort of butterfly spray we've got there. We've got some 3D um, billboards as well. The less billboardy and more, you know, actual rotating signs. So you can put that all over your stuff, customize that, change the way it works, and then save it. And all of a sudden, now we've got a half-priced corporate education center. Um, it is a high school, uh, but one of the things that could happen is we could always, um, I don't know, we could tweak some of the, more of these values and see what we could do. Size, oh, we can change the size of the, uh, the lot. Oh, there we go. Bigger high school. Uh, we can put some, maybe some benches over here. What is this? Sandboxes? Oh, sandboxes. Uh, a little merry-go-round. Yeah, these these icons don't uh, don't properly work, but there we go. I'm I'm assuming by the time the release version comes out, or you know, very shortly afterwards, that will be adjusted. So by the time you get your hands on the game, some of these visuals will probably work out. Just a bit of a an issue, a bit of a bug, I'm sure, in the preview version here. There we go. Hey, playground. What else we got? Fountains. Hey, very nice. What else we got? More fountains. Big fountain, and another one. And there you go. So you can sort of make your own. Um, I think that unless you're a 3D modeler, making the custom buildings may make a little bit less sense. But you can obviously see how you could make your, your custom parks this way in a very cool fashion. Anyway, I hope this, uh, this quick look at the asset editor um, helped uh, give you a little bit of information about how it works. And um, there you go. We'll see you next time. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel, of course, if you want more Cities Skyline content. There's... Um, there's a, a lot of stuff that I'm doing, a lot of little guides, including full Let's Plays. So I'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.